scalping in trading is it right for you does it fit into your portfolio should you be looking at it at all we're going to answer all of these questions here today but let's first start with what scalping is and it's essentially just a short-term trading strategy any real there's no strategy involved i guess in the term scalping itself it's essentially short-term trading that is aimed at profiting from small price changes. And, and the reason that I call it the strategy piece is because you as an individual already have kind of your strategy in, in my mind is just how your mind works around markets. It already exists, whether you're a passive investor or an options trader or just an active stock trader, you already have the strategy that that works for you. Uh, scalping isn't necessarily a strategy. It's more of a time frame. And you can see here, looking at the S&P for the last year, um, a, a scalping um, you know, version of trading the S&P 500 would essentially be putting, uh, taking on uh, and putting, putting on and taking off positions in the same day or in a matter of a 24, 48 hour period. Uh, just short-term trading, often involving high leverage, which makes sense, right? If I'm trading intraday or I'm trading intra-week even, uh, and I'm trying to make money off of maybe a half percentage point or a percentage point move in the S&P 500, then um, to make it worthwhile, you would want more than what most brokers give you for uh, stock, which is you know either one-to-one uh, leverage there, or uh, where you have to put up 100%, or you have to put up 50%. And so leverage is often a part of scalping. And that's why a lot of people will usually uh, commit scalping uh, trading with futures or with uh, Forex markets that have higher leverage than stock most times. So before, you know, getting down to how you can deploy scalping strategies, first, you know, wh whether or not it's right for you is going to depend on a couple of things. Um, one, uh, are you actively trading? And, and what I mean by that is, are, are you checking your portfolio um, and, and shifting stuff around more than a couple of times per year? Because if you're in the grouping, and there's nothing wrong with you know being a passive investor, the stock market over the last uh, several decades has averaged uh, a plus six or seven percent higher move, depending on the time frame you're looking at uh, in the S&P 500 there. And yeah, that'll depend on the index you're looking at as well. So nothing wrong with passive investing. But if you are a passive investor, then the idea of scalping and trading probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, if you are you know, buying and selling, if you're managing stock positions, say once a month or uh, you know, a couple of times a month or you know, 10 times a year, then maybe you take a look at uh, scalping here. I, and I would throw you in that active trading group. And if you're an options trader, then yeah, you're an active trader as well. And maybe look at scalping as well. And, and here just highlighting, you know, not trading the S&P 500 every day or intraday, but a couple of times per year or putting on a strangler iron condor uh, every couple of, uh, you know, weeks or months um, to try to trade the volatility of the S&P 500. I would throw you in that active group. And then, so, all right, I'm active, I'm potentially interested in scalping, but do I have to, you know, learn this whole new thing, this whole new strategy? Do I uh, have to figure all this uh, different stuff out for this different way of trading? Or can I lend my current active uh, strategy to um, this uh, scalping here? And, and I think that you can, and, and just jumping off of um, well, we can go through either thread. If, if you're used to trading options and you're used to selling options, let's say you sell strangles, you uh, sell iron condors, um, you sell puts, you sell calls, whatever it is, um, then you would probably be a contrarian scalper. And, and, and what I mean by that is 
uh, a big move to the upside in the S and P 500 or in uh, the Euro or in a bond market, what have you crude oil. Um, you would go against that. Uh, if you see a big drop, you would potentially buy that uh, there. And, and so, Again, you can see what I'm getting at where there's synergy between the strategy you're currently deploying in options and in scalping. If you're an option buyer, you you know look for uh, lower volatility uh, plays and you try to buy that low vol for the expansion there. You would maybe be uh, more of a trend follower. And so a big move higher in the S&P 500, you're trying to ride that higher, not necessarily for the next couple of weeks or months, um, but for the next couple of minutes or hours. Um, and same goes for if the market's moving lower, selling into that. And so really the time frame is shorter and the risk can be larger because you're uh, on a per trade basis, usually exercising higher leverage with a scalping strategy. Um, but the, the way that you see the world essentially doesn't change just because you're now uh, going from an active stock trader or an options trader to, you know, essentially the most active version of that, which is scalping. And same thing goes if you're, you know, getting in and out of stock positions on a, a weekly, monthly basis, um, same thing goes if, like, if you're a value trader, you look for things that are, you know, knocked down in price, you buy them, you sell them higher, then you would probably be similarly a contrarian. Whereas if you see a chart of a market getting annihilated and do you think that it's going to continue lower and you sell into that, again, you'd be a trend follower. It's just changing the time frame and the uh, product suite, so to speak. And, and same goes for, you know, management or, or how you deploy your strategy. A lot of volatility traders um, using options will look at implied volatility, right? And and if I'm selling uh, options, um, I'm a contrarian scalper in this uh, example, then I look for expensive implied volatility, expensive options prices, and I'm likely to sell those. Um, and, and the same would go for if uh, I'm a contrarian scalper here. And it's funny because standard deviations are essential in the calculation for implied volatility. Uh, and, and so if I'm scalping the S&P 500 instead of trading options on it, uh, I look for that abnormal move, uh, essentially what would equate to high implied volatility but on a per day basis would be a movement outside of a standard deviation, which currently is around 1% for the S&P 500. If I see the market down by a percent and a half, I might look at buying it. If I see it up by a percent and a half, I might look at selling it. And on the flip side of that coin, if I'm a volatility buyer um, and I'm looking to buy into uh, options with volatility expansion potential, then if the market is up one standard deviation, I might buy it and ride it higher for, like I say, just the next few minutes, the next few hours on same uh, riding that market lower if it's down a percentage point or so. And just in as, as an example, um, it, for a contrarian uh, standpoint here, you could potentially enter uh, at one standard deviation and take off for a profit at half a standard deviation or a loss at one and a half standard deviations. Uh, similar management techniques to, you know, buying a strangle for $2 and closing it out for $1 in profit or $1 in loss. And we bring up the loss piece because, you know, this is the type of strategy that um, gets deployed very often you quickly a, a nice piece of it is you rack up a lot of occurrences um, but if you are exercising leverage and racking up uh, a lot of occurrences in a given day a given week or month or year there um, you're likely going to want to uh, manage losses there because you you can't have uh, so to speak nine profiting trades uh, for let's say a hundred bucks and then one losing trade for 5,000 bucks. And so taking losses, very regular occurrence in scalping trading, but also here when you're, uh, why, why do I want more occurrences? Well, in theory, even the passive investor who just looks at maybe 
funding their account, uh, however much money per year, and just buying more of the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, they, in theory, want as many occurrences as well, just as the options trader, just as the scalper wants uh, occurrences. Because, of course, you're in the market because you think your strategy, and let's just stick to the passive investor for right now as an example, your strategy has a hopefully a positive expected outcome. Uh, and for that passive investor, it is that plus 6% uh, average of the S&P 500 over the historical period. And of course, the future is not dictated by the past, but if you have in your mind a positive expected outcome, um, if you have one occurrence, one big trade, that can be very good. It can be a lot better than the positive expected outcome. It can be a lot worse than the positive expected outcome. If I have two trades, okay, I can have one good, one bad, and maybe I'm closer. If I have a thousand trades, then you see where I'm going. I, on average, my average trade in those thousands is closer to that expected outcome there. And so that's why you want more occurrences by the, the, the law of large numbers, your average occurrence will reach that expected outcome as the number of occurrences grows. But what's also nice about this, uh, you know, when you're scalping with futures and you're jumping from not only stocks to, but also to commodities and interest rates, and then in Forex as well, where you get a uh, high leverage and a lot of scalpers in there, um, those occurrences are also by and large independent, less correlated than if you're just in the stock market. If you're just scalping stocks, for example, and it's like, oh man, I got five occurrences today. What were they? Microsoft, Google, Apple. It's going to be very similar occurrences there. So you get the independence piece, you get the larger number of occurrences piece, but also keep in mind that risks are usually larger with uh, you know, these short term higher leverage trades um, and that historical uh, expected outcome might not hold for the future here. But uh, a, a couple of reasons to maybe take a look at scalping in trading if it aligns with the way that you think how active you are in the market uh, and your portfolio as well.